Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to go a little deeper into the circle of fifths like we talked about. And, uh, you know, I basically gave you like the real starting building blocks and a lot of people had a lot of questions. Um, basically, you just got to keep going back, work it out. But the main thing is to write it down. Write down from C to C. Look at it. No sharps, no flats. Then write from G to G with no sharps, no flats and add that sharp. And you'll start to see things take place if you keep adding, going from the fifth and adding, uh, sharpening the seventh. You'll start to see it. Somebody else made a comment too about like memorizing the order of them. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I, I, to me, it's like if you start to memorize, you don't understand. Uh, memorization doesn't mean understanding, and I'd rather have you understand it. So eventually you'll memorize it from knowing the G has the F sharp, the D has F and C, the A has F, C, and G, the E has F, C, G, and D. So you'll start to see that, and you'll start to get it. Um, one thing I can give you an example of something that I used to do when I was driving. Uh, if I'm in the car, I'll think about a song, and I'll be like, all right, take a song, and we're going to start easy with like Sweet Home Alabama. Now, Sweet Home Alabama goes D, C, G, almost the whole song. So what I used to do is I used to think, okay, so D has an F sharp, so we know it's, we know it's in a sharp key. We go to the C. It has a C natural because uh, F and C are the first two sharps that appear. And so once we see that there's an F sharp and there's a C natural, automatically we know we're in the key of G. And then the next chord's the G. Now, if we tried to figure it out backwards and we went from the G, C to D just to pick the chords in any order, you would see that the G has a B natural, and so it can't be in a flat key. You would see that the C natural is next, so you know we were in either, we could be in two possible keys. We could be in the key of G or the key of C. And then with the D chord coming next, we can then see that we're in the key of G. So what does that mean? It means that when you solo, even though you're tonal centering the D, there's just one sharp and that C is natural. Now I said that's the way I used to do it because now in my head when I look at something real quickly, if somebody doesn't tell me the key or it's not written in the chart or in the sheet music, I just see the two majors next to each other, I just assume they're four and five. Uh, because one, four, and five are majors. So if I see a, a song, like let's take a song, um, my band does um, um, Here Comes My Girl. The song just pedals between A and B major. Uh, very much the same way Dreams pedals between F and G by Fleetwood Mac. This just pedals between A major and B major, which should tell you right away that the song is in the key of E. So that's kind of like a little bit of a tip off for you to know those types of things. Uh, and to try to figure those out. Now, a lot of songs have um, leading chords and, and things that go out of the key because they want to lead you somewhere. It happens in country quite a bit. Um, off the top of my head, there's a Tim McGraw song, uh, Live Like You Were Dying, where he goes in the chorus, the second half, he goes to a B dominant seven. And the reason is and I'm just going to keep this brief because I don't really think we should get into this just yet in part two, maybe part three or four down the road. But what happens is he's he's leading you to go to the E minor. And how does he do that? He plays a B7, which is the dominant seven to the E minor. And you would hear that in the E harmonic minor. So for that particular chord, they borrow from the E harmonic minor scale, which is basically... Uh, an altered version of the G major scale. But that's getting deep, and we're not going to really get into that. We want to keep things to the basics so that you have an understanding. Then we can learn how to break the rules and figure things out. Now, some other questions people asked me was like, um, do I look at the shapes and do I, uh, you know, or do I hear the notes or do I think of the notes? It's kind of like a mixture of all three. And I'll explain. If I'm playing a blues number and like my favorite, I'm not a blues fan, everybody knows that. My favorite blues song to play, like if I go to a jam, is probably um, I Need Your Love So Bad by Fleetwood Mac, the old um, Peter Green version of it. And uh, it just has some nice changes to it. But that being said, there's some parts into it where I, I'd phone it in. 
and it sounds good phoning it in. But I phone it in by just going to the A major or F sharp minor pentatonic when it goes over the 1625 uh, section of the second half. And then at the very end, I go right back to the A minor blues pentatonic just because it's playing the 1415. So in that respect, um, I do phone it in. But even when I'm doing it, I still know the notes and hear them. Like even though I'm half asleep playing, because I'm not really a huge blues guy. Uh, I um, I don't really have a love for it. And the reason for me, and this doesn't make it right, and it doesn't make me wrong, I prefer songs that are very melodic and very harmonic rich. So I like to hear like Steely Dan and I like to hear like a lot of the 70s AM radio songs. I mean, like you take a song like Laughter in the Rain or you take a song like Baby Come Back or any of the early Hall and Oates stuff. It's beautifully written, great chords and beautiful melodies. Sarah Smile, simple song. Uh, you know, people always say, oh, you don't like blues because it's three chords. It has nothing... I mean, I love songs that have one chord. I love ACDC. They, every song has three chords. I, I don't like blues because it just doesn't have a melody for me. And it's also listening to somebody bitch. And uh, it just isn't for me. But it's an important thing to know how to do. And if you like it, it's a good thing to master. You know, um, I'm not the end all answer in the universe of what should be good and what should be bad i like what i like you know and people have a hard time with other people not liking what they like and i find that to be odd because it's like um you know i remember i was talking about some old movies and people mentioned it i'm like yeah i hated it oh it's a classic everybody loves it yeah well everybody doesn't love it because i don't love it and then it was late, later on, I, I read an article about Stanley Kubrick, and Stanley Kubrick hated a lot of the stuff that I hated. Not to say that I'm on, on par with them, but here's a guy who's a validated, great filmmaker, and he's saying he doesn't like them either. So I felt somewhat vindicated, like saying, see, not everybody loves it. The Godfather, for instance, is a great movie. Is it the greatest movie of all time? Well, arguably. I mean, I think it's fantastic. But to me, I'd rather watch Goodfellas. Uh, I'd rather see Goodfellas. I could watch Goodfellas on a loop. In fact, I remember um, when I lived in Venice in this house on Frey Ave. And uh, every Saturday was my day off. And I would have Goodfellas running on a loop on my TV. I would just play it every, every Saturday. Loved it. Something about Mary is another movie I could watch a billion times. But uh, enough about that. Let's we're taking a look at the theory of music and understanding it. So there's a couple of things that you really should look into if you're a guitar player. If you're a piano player, not so much. I mean, piano players have it. I mean, there's guys like Bill Evans, awesome, awesome. And, um, you know, even the early Herbie Hancock, when he played piano in the 60s, um, from Taken Off on, those records are great. His piano playing's fantastic. But, but there's some things for the guitar players. I would say check out Ted Green and watch. There's these great interviews with Ted Green on YouTube. And just watch him talk music. And it's probably one of the greatest minds and one of the greatest losses in music when we lost him. Um because of his genius and you know he brings up a lot of great things and, and things that have stuck with me for instance a major which we've discussed has an f c and g sharp in the key of a flat those are the three naturals f c and g and everything else is flatted and those are really neat concepts um to evaluate because the next time somebody brings up the key of a flat which on guitar sucks um, you'd know it better, um, you know. And uh, and I go, going back real quickly to these blues jams and whatnot, I've played in these blues bands, and they all love to play in B-flat because the old blues records were in B-flat because there were horns or there was piano and they're arranged for those instruments and the guitar was kind of like a secondary, like, yeah, you just play what we're playing. 
And then you go up there and there's two or three guitar players only and a bass player and they're like, oh, we're going to do it in B flat. My response to you is go F yourself. First of all, you've cut out a lot of the open strings. The guitar is a sharp instrument. Guitar players use capos because you need to play in those flat keys and the instrument is really meant to be played in sharp keys, just like horns and stuff are easier played in the flat keys. Now you can play them in the flat keys on the guitar, it just sucks. But it's great to know that in A flat, you um, F, C, and G is natural and the rest are flats. That's all you need to know. And so, and the other cool thing is, so when you're thinking about the flats, F, the key of F has one flat. And not only does it have one flat, which is a B flat, it also is the only flat key that doesn't have a flat in the name. So you have the key of F has one flat, B flat two flats, E flat has three flats, A flat has four flats, D flat has five flats, and so on. So it's good to know that the key of F is the only flat key that doesn't have a flat in its name. And there's other, um, you know, other cool things that you can figure out while watching some of the Ted Green stuff, because like I said, he's really great. I want you to pick up a songbook, any songbook, whether you have it in your house, if you have a piano, or if you got to go to a store, or just go online and look up sheet music and test yourself on seeing, you know, if something has three sharps, can you figure out the key? If something has, you know, and you should know if it has three sharps, it's F, C, and G, and you don't even have to you can see it from a mile away. You don't have to go look up on the lines to see what notes they are. Those are going to be the notes. So, um, like I said, things get a little shaky when you start getting into harmonic minor and melodic minor. Um, but that's the, uh, that's the animal that it is. So anyway, uh, recently um, my band wanted to do Jesse's Girl. And um, the bass player was like, well, I haven't had a chance to look at it. And uh, it's curious because, uh, and I hope he's watching, because uh, you need to understand, you know, once you look it up and you can see that it's in the key of D. You know, it's all D, A, B minor. And again, there's only seven chords. And really, technically, no one's using the diminished so much. So it's six chords. So you've got D, A, B minor. you got a G in there. So what is that? four chords the whole song there's a part where it changes keys for a second um, and then goes back to the key of D but that's not really that important and in in that section it goes to the key of B it goes down a minor third for the but anyways um, the main part of the song there are four chords and the whole song plays around those four chords or those four notes on the bass. So if you're playing in the dark and you look at everything like, I can't, you know, like you don't have an understanding of, of you have to, then you have to memorize. But if you know it's in the key of D and that F and C are sharp, and, and really you're not even playing any of those, you're just playing the D, A, B, G, which are, you know, the, uh, the one, five, six, four, you could then easily have a greater understanding and a great retention to remember how the song goes. And then when you play the solo, the same thing happens. Like when I play these solos at the beginning of, uh, of these episodes, some of them I played for years because I play them in the band and I have to go back and, wa and I watch them or I, I go back and I listen to the original again and make sure that I haven't strayed far from it. And I try to get a I try to reel it in. Mm -hmm. Tractor beam. I try to reel it in. But half the time, I've never played the song before in my life, and I'm just going to listen to it for the first time. For instance, I'm a huge Steve Lukath fan, but I've never played the solo to I, I Won't Hold You Back. I've always loved it. I've listened to it. So I just listened to it now, and I went and listened, and just was listening to where the bends were as opposed to the, to the true notes. And um, and I played it, but I could hear the key and I could figure it out really quickly. And then after I learned it, the version on the Toto one was like in one key, and then I had to play it a half step down 
which is an easy fix, when I went to the backing track. But for the most part, I can hear it, figure it out, because I understand music and how the scales work and everything. So it's not like I'm in the blind. Once I kind of hear the pattern of like what he's playing, like once I hear the notes and figure out what key he's in, well then it's just like, it's it's not very difficult. And I usually play it like two or three times and then that's the one I use. And one of the reasons why I have to do it so much when I say three times is not that it's so much, but what happens is, is I'm dealing with a computer where I'm playing to a YouTube thing and I'm using OBS Studio and what happens is there's latency sometimes. So sometimes I'll play it and I'll be behind the track. And so I keep it roughly like around 100 milliseconds. And so then, like on this track, I actually had to uh, add a little bit more latency to the, um, to the YouTube backing track because I was just always, uh, uh, I was always just way behind. It was too fast. So... That's kind of like where the issue is with me, why, you know, but it's cool because while I'm playing it and trying to figure that out, I get to practice it and whatnot. The trick to that song is all in the bends and hearing the, the note in the bend and making sure you don't overbend it because it's easy to do and making sure you don't underbend it because that's sometimes easy to do. Less easy for me because I use nines and I use it for that particular reason. I don't want to have to work. I don't want to have to bend it hard to get to a note that I'm hearing. I want everything to be just, if I get to it, it's there, it's that. And Although if you're into playing quickly, which I never understood this, why like Ingve and those guys use like eights and real light gauge strings. I find it easier to use tens on a Strat to play quick, but I stick with nines just because it overall, it just works out the best for me. But anyways, so getting back to trying to figure out songs, you know, if you were to play like a song, obviously like if we looked at a song like Hold the Line, you know, we, we, that's an F sharp minor, which is the key of A major, three sharps. And it, it stays pretty true to it. Um, you know, um, the verses, it's like uh, the two... The, the B minor 7 to the C sharp minor 7 to the uh, F sharp minor 7. You know, so you got like that. It's basically going like um, 2, 3, 6. And, and those are ways you can kind of, you know, you could take some time to go write that down. If you wrote, wrote down the A major, that's what you would see. A major, B minor 7, C sharp minor 7, D major, E major, F sharp minor 7, G sharp diminished or G sharp half diminished if you're going out to the sevens. But anyways, um, and the reason why it's a half diminished, if you don't know, is that a half diminished has a dominant seven. The full diminished, a full on diminished seventh will have a flatted, a double flat seven. So in the case of like, if you were to play like a, um, Let's say you were to play a B minor half diminished. The notes would be B, D, F, A. But if you were to play a, a, B, a B diminished seventh, which is not a half diminished, a full diminished, it would be B, D, F, G sharp. And that comes from the A harmonic minor scale, because uh, which is altered, which you raise the seven. And the reason why you raise the 7 and why the harmonic minor scale is what it is is because in classical music, when you're playing in minor, they want the 5 chord to have that tension of that dominant 7 and not be a minor 7. And the only way to do that is to raise that note, that, that 7 tone of the scale, which becomes the major 3rd of the 5 chord. So that's why that's that, like that. And then the melodic minor is the same thing. They want a major 4. So it's like major four, major five to the minor one. But we're not going to go into that today. It's just if you were curious why that is. But anyways, so moving on, that's really what I would like you to do is to work that out. Now you can listen to a song. Somebody asked me about like Rock You Like a Hurricane. That song is kind of like all over the place because he's playing E majors and G's. It's kind of like a blues derivative song. But if you looked at a song like your basic song of like... Uh, no one like you 
So no one like you, he's playing the A minor to the F, and occasionally he throws in the E, although he doesn't really hit the G sharp in it. He, he plays it as an E5, but the G sharp is implied, which would imply the harmonic minor for that particular chord. Um, but then the solo is just played straight A minor. Um, no sharps and no flats. And, um, you know, you could take a look at a lot of songs. It makes life a, a, a lot easier. If you think of songs like, um, you know, lately we've been, I've been getting a lot of requests for Leonard Skinner. And uh, eventually I'll do I Know a Little on here. I, I got to remember. It's just I got to remember before I start filming. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. So, um, you have a song like Simple Man, and the whole song is C, G to A minor. And the song is in the key of C, or A minor, however you want to look at it. But that's basically the whole song. It's it's one, five, six. Then you could look at a song like Tuesday's Gone, which is one of my favorites, and it's like one, which is in it, it's in the key of A, A to E, which is the five, F sharp minor, which is the six, to D, which is the four, and then it's one, five, four for the turnaround. Um, at one point in the song, they throw the curveball at you, and they want to give more of that gospel-y sound, and they, they go uh, A major to G major to D. And at that particular point, they're playing from the key of D centered on A, which some of you will call A mixolydian, and others won't. And you don't have to, you can if you want, and I don't care. I don't. I would just say if they switch to the key of D and play it, play it center on A. And that gives that gospel -y church, you know, that Tuesday's gone, that whole, st the whole step. And they just do that in the chorus, that A, G to D, to give you that church feel. And then they want to give you resolution. So he goes back to A and he's like, A, my baby's E to the D. -ba -da -dum -da. And... It's all about chord manipulation. And, and so for the most part, if you were soloing over that, you would solo in the key of D over A until the last stanza when you could then switch to the A major. I mean, you're really just talking about changing one note. But a lot of people on guitar get so consumed with positions because they don't play by the notes. They play from what they, you know, like what they're taught and like here's like riffs. And to me... Um, I think that's that's damaging to you because what ends up happening is you end up then becoming like uh, a, like you play stock licks and I try to stay away I mean there's obviously licks that I like and things that I like the sound of but you really should know the notes and learn the notes and I'm just going to stress that again you really need to learn the notes on the guitar and uh, it just makes life easy. A lot of this was going to work. You're going to have to do on your own. Watch part one again. Everything is in there. So I'm going to stress it again. Every one chord is major or it's a major seven. Every two chord is a minor or a minor seven. Every three chord is a minor or a minor seven. Every four chord is a major or a major seven. Every five chord is a major or a dominant seven. Every six is minor or minus seven. Every seven is diminished or half diminished seventh. Now that being said, these are not the steadfast rules. These are the common rules of everything, but they can be broken. You will listen to a country song and hear the two be a major. And you'd say to me, Dave, what, what, why is the, are the two supposed to be a minor? Why is it a major? Well, it's done for a reason of changing the feel of the key to manipulate you to the next chord. If you play a G and the next chord and you want to get to the D, you'd play in country like Honky Tonk Woman even, you'd play the A7 as the two because the A7 then is acting as a five and it wants to resolve. So you can resolve it to the D because A resolves to D. It's the five of D. And now D wants to resolve because you've made it a seven and it resolves back to the root of the g it's all about chord manipulation there's a lesson that i did on blues where i play a g7 chord 
and I'm playing in the key of C, as I stated in the first video, that the key of the G7 is the 5 of C, and therefore you're in the key of C. So I play in the key of C, rooting around a G. However, the second half of the second bar, I'm treating the G7 as a 5 to C, because I'm going to go to C, which is the 4, but I'm going to act like I'm resolving to it. So to do that, what I do is then I play the altered scale, the G altered scale, and the G altered scale, I know this is getting a little intense, but all the G altered scale is, is the A flat melodic minor scale starting from the 7. And what it does is you start to hit all the tension notes against the G7, making your ear want to resolve to the C. So I do that. And you can go back to that video and watch and check it out. I'm not going to really get into Altered now or any of the crazy jazz stuff because um, it's too early on in this. And I I'm basically want you to, first of all, just to understand the keys, how they work, and, um, and the rules. And the rules are not law. They're just rules. So, yes, every, every third in a scale is a minor. Can you make it major in a, in a song? Of course you can. There's a million songs. Um, there's a Tom Waits song, Charlie, I'm pregnant, living on 9th Street. I believe it goes G to B dominant, 7 to C, back to the G. Well, the three there, he's making it ma dominant major as opposed to minor 7. And there's a reason, and it's the tonal thing, and... Um, but he breaks out of the scale. So if you were to solo over that, you would have to get out of the key of G on that B7 because that B dominant 7 is, you could play like an E harmonic minor or you could do what you want. But basically, you could even play a B altered at that point. I mean, again, I don't want to get too much into it. Anyways, I feel like I'm, I'm taking it down a river and I'm taking the paddle away. Go back, watch the first one, and then go over a couple of things I said, but a lot of the work has got to be done by you. All right, so uh, the next thing we'll go over is I'm going to pull up some examples of songs and we're going to look at them in sheet and I'll pull up, pull up some sheet music and we'll look at that. All righty, but for now, um, it's a beautiful day and I'm going to get out of here. I have a gig tonight and uh, that is all. Very good. I'm going to shame that crazy bitch on YouTube. Mr. Blue... Mr. Blutowski, zero point zero. You're right on target. You're right on the money. Everything you said. You hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.